Hi everyone, Ainsley here from Small Fry Creations where we tackle everything DIY and this week we're checking out a new laser and learning about the rotary. Let's roll the intro and get to work. This week we're going to be building the Otor Laser Master 2 Pro. This laser was provided to me by a company called Made the Best. I'll be sure to link them down below. When they reached out to me, I said I was super keen to learn about the rotary attachment, so they've sent it along with the laser for us to learn about today. Our first step is to put it together. I'm going to speed through this process because there's already tons of information out there on the internet about putting them together. And then we can get to the meat of this video, which is learning about the rotary attachment. If you're a beginner and you're looking at getting up and running with a laser, check out my video that I will link up here, which is where I show you how you can get up and running with a laser in just one day. But in the meantime, let's get this thing together. The Otor Laser Master 2 is all constructed, but what a mission. I would not say this is super easy to put together, especially if I'm comparing it with the Sculfin S9. You've really got to read the instructions top to bottom. Also, the instructions don't come in the box. You have to have a digital device to read them from. It took me about two hours to put together and it is quite fiddly, but we are here. Some things that I like about it. It has really nice, heavy, sturdy construction. I also like that it has limit switches. So when I power on the laser, it automatically knows to head for home. Some things that I don't like about it, the length of the power cable. It's not very long, especially when you compare it to the USB cable, which is quite long. It would have been nice if those lengths were switched around, but it is what it is. Now with this laser, there are two laser head modules that you can choose. There is a short focus and a long focus. I have been provided with the long focus, which also includes all of the bits and pieces to add air assist, excluding the air pump. I will add air assist at a later date because I'm interested to learn about it, but we're not gonna focus on it today. From my research, the short focus laser is excellent at engraving and good at cutting, whereas the long focus is excellent at cutting and good at engraving. Now, before we get to the rotary attachment, I wanna run some tests so that I can learn a little bit about the laser and its settings. So I'm gonna use the samples, run some tests and learn about it, and then we can get to the rotary attachment. gone ahead and done some simple testing which you've just seen. Overall, pretty happy with the machine. But what we're here for today is the rotary attachment. I want to get this guy unpacked and start to get into it and learn about it. I know absolutely nothing about the rotary machine so we can learn together. First things, let's get this box open, have a look at what's inside and get it put together. put together. It's not too hard to do. The manual does include pictures with written instructions and I will also include a video below if seeing it being put together visually is more your jam because it definitely helped me out. But I think there are two critical things missing from these instructions. Number one, they do not show you how to set up the rotary using light burn. They do run you through with laser gerbil but there is no mention of light burn. But even more critical than that, 
They don't include how to use the rotary. They don't show you how to make adjustments or how to use it. So there is definitely a learning curve involved. And I'm gonna be honest with you, for the last two nights, I've had to put the camera down and troubleshoot how to use the rotary. Cause when I connected it to the laser, I started to run into a whole host of problems. I couldn't get it to frame. It was running into different axes. It was running all over the place. It turns out that out of the box, I was running old firmware. Out of the box, this had firmware 185. The latest firmware is 187. So I have gone ahead and updated the firmware. You can do that using a Mac or a Windows PC. It's pretty easy to do. There's lots of instructions out there. And I think I am now at a point where we can actually use the rotary. The first thing I'm gonna do is show you how to make the adjustments for whatever you're going to burn onto. And then hopefully we can get it hooked up to the laser and get burning. With the rotary, there are a couple of things that you can adjust. The first one being these bearings. Depending on what you're lasering will depend on whether or not you need to have this attached to the rotary or not. If you do, it simply attaches down the front here and it's designed to help keep the workpiece level. For example, if you're doing a wine glass, then you would have to have this attached and the stem would sit in the middle to help keep everything level. If you're doing something like a water bottle, you may not need to have those bearings attached. With the rotary itself, there are two things you need to adjust. The belt, which adjusts via this nut down here because it has a slide up and down to tension the belt and also the roller itself. We're gonna go ahead and remove the belt first and then we can change our roller. Now that the belt is off, I can adjust the roller. The roller that has the triangle piece of plastic is the one that you want to adjust. You simply loosen the nuts and then move it to where it is appropriate to hold up your workpiece. Now that I've got my roller in the correct position, I can re-tension my belt. You do want to pull this lower nut down pretty tight as you want the belt to be quite firm. This is now ready to be attached to the laser. Just quickly before we attach the rotary to the laser, I want to stop and give a quick shout out to Scott over at Scott's Custom Creations. I will link his Instagram below. He's one of the nicest guys in the Aussie maker community and he also makes fantastic products for makers. So be sure to go and check out his website. I have been so frustrated for the last two days trying to get this rotary to work. And I reached out to Scott knowing he had a similar setup and he was so lovely. He sent me a six minute video with tips and tricks. So thank you Scott for sending those through because I I'm going to share those today so that they not only help me, but they also help everyone watching this video. We're at the point where we can attach the rotary to the laser and finally, hopefully, burn something. It's been a long time coming and I'm excited. I should mention we also need to raise up the laser. I'm probably gonna come up with a permanent solution, but for the time being, some screw boxes and wood will do the job. The first thing I need to do without plugging the rotary in so it is as it is a standard laser is power it on. It will auto home and at the same time, I'm gonna fire up light burn. Now I'm gonna draw just a random rectangle box somewhere in the middle of my workpiece. And under location, I'm gonna send the laser somewhere out into the middle. Now that I have done that, I'm going to attach the rotary. To do that, I need this jumper cable. So one end is going to be plugged into the rotary itself. And the other one, I'm going to unplug the Y motor from the stepper motor over here and plug it into the jumper cable. That has now connected the roller. I now need to set up the roller. So to do that, I'm going to go to Laser Tools Rotary Setup. I'm going to select that it is a roller. And here I need to take some critical measurements. So you are gonna need a set of calipers. For my calipers, I'm going to measure the diameter of my rollers. Mine are 19.66. I'm going to enter that into my roller diameter. That now will never have to change unless I change the rotary itself. Now from here, I need to also put in my object diameter. This is what is going to change depending on what you're lasering. I'm gonna practice on this water bottle. So I'm gonna take its diameter which is 69.24 millimeters. 
From there, the system will auto calculate the circumference. We need to either write that number down or copy and paste it because we need to know this in the event, especially if you're going to design something that's going to go the whole way around your object. That circumference number that you've just got, you're going to enter that into the height of the rectangle that you have just drawn somewhere in the middle of your workpiece. Now that we've got the height, which is the measurement the whole way around the object, we now need the width. That's going to depend on what your object is. For this, I know that I can comfortably work within 60 millimeters, so I'm going to set my width to 60 millimeters. I don't know if I mentioned this before, but if you are using a water bottle that has a removable lid, I would suggest removing it because it can throw the balance off. Now I can insert my water bottle onto my rollers and I can test to make sure that it's going to roll freely and not interrupt with anything and the water bottle's not going to move. To do that, I'm just gonna hit frame. It will move the rollers and the laser left to right. Now we're going to run a quick test to make sure that we have dialed in our settings correctly. To do that, I'm going to take my rectangle and I'm going to Command D to duplicate it. I'm going to change my width to be four millimeters. I also am going to put that outer rectangle on a toolpath so that it is there as reference, but it's not actually going to burn. So I'll put that on T1. Now I should also mention a video that I found quite helpful through this process, which I will link below, is a video from the Louisiana Hobby Guy. This test that we're about to run is from that video. So on my lines, I have set up my settings at 800 speed and 50% power. Now at this point, I should be able to press frame and this will check that the rollers are working and I can also make sure that the water bottle is not moving left to right. So we'll press frame, make sure that everything is nice and steady, which it looks like it is, which is great. And because the line is only at 50%, it's designed to hopefully not burn through the blue painter's tape, because I don't actually want to ruin the workpiece. I just want to test that I've got my settings dialed in and then we can put some artwork on here. Now I think we are ready to go. Pop on my safety glasses. I'm going to move you forward and then we can press start. All right, I will also mention while the laser is running, I have a fan going and I have the roller door to my right open so that the fumes are being blown out. Now, something that I noticed in that test is that it was going round way too many times. It did way more than one rotation. I have worked out, I think, what that is. In my rotary setup, I have my millimeters, millimeters per rotation as 360. I'm going to change that to 20.04, which is the same as the Louisiana Hobby Guy, and rerun the test and see if that works. Hopefully, I haven't burnt through my paper and onto my workpiece, but we will soon find out. So I'm gonna change that. Okay, my settings are all dialed in. For this water bottle, it needed to be set to 61 millimeters per rotation. So you really just need to play around with that number until you get that perfect rectangle matching all the way around. There's probably some scientific calculations, but I ain't that smart. I'm just gonna play around with it until I get it right or close enough to where I'm happy. I'm now at the point where I can remove the blue painter's tape, load in my logo, and then hopefully burn my logo onto the water bottle. So let's have a crack. My logo is loaded, but before I press start, I wanna share a quick tip with you that Scott shared with me that I haven't seen anywhere and I think could be really helpful. It has to do with the number of rotations your object is going to do. You really only want it to do one rotation. This will help eliminate any misalignment. And to do this, you're going to double click on your fill layer, you're going to go to the advanced tab and you're going to make sure that the flood fill is turned off. This means that the rotary will only do one rotation and it will laser everything in that line as it goes. Fantastic tip, I think everyone should know it and I think we're now at the point where I can press start and hopefully in a couple of minutes I've got a water bottle with a logo on it. It worked! It's totally the wrong way around but I don't even care because it worked! <laughs> I lasered something onto a bottle. I know it's the wrong way around. Uh, that's because I think I'm a pelican and I should have my rotary this way. So that the stepper motor is matching the stepper motor. I'm pretty sure that's what I need to do. But as a first go, <laughs> I did it. 
Look at that. All right, now I'm going to do it on the other side because I've already ruined this bottle, so now this will be my test bottle to see whether or not turning that around is in fact the right thing to do. So let's turn that around. I'm going to make it the logo smaller just so it doesn't take so long. That print took 23 minutes, so let's make it slightly smaller. Do the other side and see if I can get it right. I think I did it. I think it worked. Yes, it worked. <laughs> Look at that. I'll show you all close up, but man, that looks cool. I did it. Ah, oh, this is what making is about, it is this feeling right here when I've pushed through the last two nights of frustration to finally achieve the goal that I set out to achieve. I can't believe it. The alignment is terrible, but who cares? It's on there and it's the right way. I can dial in the settings further from here, but that makes me so happy. So I have worked out that the design has to be facing down on the work bed and facing to the left, but ah, oh, that looks so, so good. I want to give a huge thank you to Made the Best who has supplied me with the laser and the rotary. I will link these products down in the description below. And also a huge thank you to Scott for helping me getting the rotary up and running. I hope this video has helped you. If it has helped me out by hitting those subscribe and like buttons, I'm going to continue to celebrate and I'll see you on the next one.